Good evening. I'm Monica McCain Sanchez, and welcome to CB8 Speaks. This is a monthly program about Community Board 8, which is the Upper East Side of Manhattan and Roosevelt Island. The Upper East Side constitutes the district between East 96th Street to the north, East 59th Street to the south, East River to Fifth Avenue. This program is uh, designed to inform the area, the residents of our area, and actually all of Manhattan, about those things that are important to our, our neighborhood. Please visit our website at www.cb8m.com. Tonight's program is about the 2010 census. You may have heard that the census is occurring this year. In fact, how could you not? There was a big Super Bowl ad. Uh, there, there are signs everywhere. And pretty much um, people will say, all right, it's coming. I don't really need to be counted. Somebody else will do it. You know, they, they can estimate these who's missing. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, they can get this information from the IRS, right? The IRS knows what you make, where you live. Uh, the post office has your addresses. Why is it important for you to fill these things out? Well, it's actually, it's a very, very big deal. And that's why we want to do a program about this, because it affects our community, it affects our city, and our state, and our country. So tonight, we actually are really, really honored to have a very um, important, a very interesting person to speak to this. Jeffrey M. Weiss has over 30 years of experience in working in redistricting, voting rights, and census law. He's considered a national expert on redistricting and has been included in, by roll call in its list of the top 50 Washington policy insiders. Mr. Wise has assisted many state legislative leaders, members of Congress, and other state and local government officials on redistricting and voting rights across the nation. In the 1980s, Mr. Wise developed the first National Democratic Party redistricting assistance program, working with state legislators of many states preparing for the 1990 census and redistricting process. Mr. Weiss serves as a, served as counsel to the President's appointees to the 2000 Federal Census Monitoring Board. And during the 2000 redistricting cycle, Mr. Weiss served as a counsel to the National Democratic Committee's redistricting project. He also represented Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus in its successful and its federal law court effort to ensure minority voting rights under the Voting Rights Act. As the Democratic Party prepares for the 2010 census and sub subsequent redistricting, Mr. Weiss serves as counsel to the Foundation for the Future, the party's redistricting planning project. Mr. Weiss has been a contributor to the National Conference of State Legislators, which is known as NCSL, in its redistricting law handbook for the 1990-2000-2010 editions. As a longtime counsel to the New York State Legislature, Mr. Weiss has served in several NCSL leadership positions, including service in the National Executive Committee and as staff chair of the Elections and Redistricting Committee. He is a special professor of law at Hofstra Law School, where he teaches election law. In the past, he has also taught election law at Turo Law School. He has also lived in Community Board 8, and he has been an auxiliary police officer, although he um, admits it was not in Community Board 8. So he has um, a very interesting, varied background. So thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Thank you for inviting me. And I know it's a very, very busy time for you and anybody involved with the census. So we, we really do appreciate your time to come here because it's so, we actually realize it's very important. So why don't you tell everyone at large in general, why is it important? Well, the census is important. Number one, it's required by the U.S. Constitution. You mentioned that information is available from the IRS, mm. from the post office, you know, other kinds of federal information uh, venues, but the U.S. Constitution requires that the, that the census be taken every 10 years. The main purpose is to reapportion the United States House of Representatives. The 435 seats in Congress are determined, the, the distribution among the states, by the census data. Uh, the census is also used for funding formulas, for socioeconomic analysis, and within states for the actual redrawing under the uh, one person, one vote doctrine of equal representation, all of your city council, state assembly, state senate, and congressional districts. So it's really the building block of our democracy. 
you know, unlike IRS information, which is confidential, uh, postal records, which is wide open, the census itself is a confidential uh, process. The information that uh, is, is re asked by the census remains locked up for 70 years. And, you know, viewers may be interested to know that after 70 years, information is available online. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the 1930 census currently, you can go back and if you had relatives living in New York or anywhere in the United States, you can look it up, but not for 70 years. Mm -hmm. The information remains confidential. It can't be shared. But it is a constitutionally mandated once in a decade effort. It is the largest um, non military uh, undertaking the government does um, f for all the government programs. This is the biggest. Uh, it's Funding it is about is it fifteen billion? Fifteen billion dollars uh, covers the entire cost of the census, which not only involves this year and the actual accounting process, but you know the the previous decade of ramping up, preparing for the census, the research methodology, printing the forms, making sure that everything is in place. This is the biggest hiring effort outside of the military effort in World War II in American history. So it's it's not it doesn't come cheaply. Well, let's talk about it a little bit because you brought along uh, the form. You said I did. This is going to be mailed out when? Okay, the Census Bureau is going to send out a postcard to every known residence, every household, about March 8th, March 9th, just to say, look for the form. On March 15th, 16th, or 17th, every known household in the city will receive one of these census forms. Mm -hmm and the people are asked to send them back by April 1st. April 1st is referred to as Census Day. Beginning in mid to late April, for those households that don't return these forms, an army of census enumerators will scour the country, going to every residence, maybe up to a half dozen times, to try to get this information complete. Uh, there'll be qu uh, questionnaire assistance centers, are you counted centers, in supermarkets, in churches. You'll find many places throughout the city in the state to get these forms if you don't have one, if you lose one, uh, for whatever reason, if you misplaced it. But the, uh, but the goal is to get these sent back. New York City had a response rate in 2000 of about 55% citywide of the 2000 census forms. Nationally, the average is in the 65% range. We want to increase that this, this coming census round. What about Community Board 8? Uh, how is our compliance? Uh, the Upper East Side is one of the more higher counted places in New York. The other uh, chart that I, show, that I brought with me, this is essentially the geography. I hope this is, people can see this. Yeah, you can see the. Uh, okay, there. yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the Upper East Side of Manhattan. This is what we refer to for the, I think it's the 26th Senate District represented by uh, Senator Liz Krueger, what we call hard to count communities. Each of these boxes here represent a census tract. Mm -hmm. A census tract is the largest piece of geography that the census itself uses to, um, to, to designate how people are counted. And then the census tracts break down into smaller units, which people may have heard of, called census blocks. But what this map here shows, and you can see a Central Park in a kind of bright yellow and other parts along the East River across from Roosevelt Island being a little bit darker. And as you head over towards Times Square, they, they, there's a box here in brown. Mm -hmm. What this means, what this shows is that the Upper East Side generally had a very high response rate in 2000. Uh, the areas along Fifth Avenue, Madison Park had a very high return rate. Uh, as you get closer to the East River, uh, you have a harder, uh, Res, you know, a lower response rate, and in the Times Square area, you have a low response rate. Now, we've got maps that we've posted on the New York State Senate website, and you can actually access them by going to www.nysenate.gov 
backslash census. And we've got one of these maps for every single Senate district in the state. Just north of Central Park in Harlem, you'll find the entire area in dark brown, which means it is very hard to count. Mm -hmm. And let me just explain, these maps show the areas that the Census Bureau has, has designated as hard to count for various socioeconomic reasons, mm -hmm. uh, language problems, uh, housing problems, just areas that they expect to have a, a, a difficult time counting. Plus, these maps also show uh, and it's really not that identifiable on the map at this scale, but what the response rate was in 2000. We have little pie charts within each census tract that will show you what the response rate was in 2000. Mm -hmm. So for many parts of Manhattan, primarily lower Manhattan and northern Manhattan, you had very low response rates. In other parts of New York City, especially in Bushwick, Central Brooklyn, Bedford-Stuyvesant, and interestingly in southeast Queens, which the area north of Kennedy Airport, which are primarily middle-class homes, had very low response rates. In New York State, the undercount, the rate of people who don't respond at all, is about a quarter of a million people. Mm -hmm. Now, a quarter of a million people is bigger than one assembly district, which is about 150,000 people. So counting people counts. And if you're not counted, the state doesn't count. If New York State counts about 50,000 more people than anticipated, and no other state has a similar increase, then New York might not lose seats in Congress, but that's not likely to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, New York State uh, peaked in the 19, I think, 70s with about 40 some odd plus congressional districts. In 1980, New York State lost five congressional districts. In 1993, in uh, 2002, and now the estimate is losing one seat. Mm -hmm. States like Nevada, Texas, Florida, may gain two, three, four seats each. It comes out of New York. So it's important that even though mm -hmm. this community board has a very high response rate, other parts of New York City don't. Other parts of New York State don't. And if we don't address this undercounting problem, if we don't try to improve the response rate by sending back the forms in late March, then you know, the, the problem is ours. So we want to make sure that people respond to the census and that it is done as accurately and as f complete count as possible. Because for representation, for funding, th these numbers lock in for 10 years. And I'd also point out that the census form itself this year, and I have a copy I brought with me. Could you open that up? Sure. Again? Well, the form itself mm -hmm. opens up in three pages. Mm -hmm. But this is meant for a household or for a response of up to seven people. If you live by yourself and you're, you're a one-person household, you only have to deal with one side of the sheet, 10 questions, 10 questions, about 10 minutes to respond. You know, basic questions about your age, your, uh, your sex, your ethnicity, uh, and whether you live there full-time or have a second residence, uh, not detailed. Uh, there, no one will receive what they used to call the long form, which m might have taken up to uh, 45 minutes to complete. If you have children, a spouse, other people living in the household, then there's one sheet for each additional person, which is why you see um, you know, a much, much larger piece of paper here. But the basic census form itself has 10 questions, just one side of the sheet, and should take you more than 10 minutes to complete and then send back. What are some of the uh, reasons for non-response or non-compliance? Uh, people don't read their mail. People look at mail and think it's junk mail and throw it away. People forget. Some people uh, in, in apartment buildings where mail is often left not in the mailbox itself but on the floor or in a pile, they never get to really see it. Uh, people just don't like answering questions. Uh, many people, for whatever other reasons, don't want to deal with the government. Uh, some people don't speak English, and although f uh, forms are available in other languages, you, you often have to ask for them. So at the, you know, at the initial cut, if it's in English, and you need a copy in Russian, in, in, uh, in Chinese, in Spanish, you have to ask for it. Why bother? So uh, 
also, if you are um, a citizen or a non-citizen, that doesn't matter. But in, with New York's population, with many non-residents, uh, they don't want to deal with the government. There's fear of immigration, of uh, being caught. Uh, for whatever other kinds of reasons, you don't want to deal with the government. But it's important to know that the census is a head count of all persons residing in the United States on April 1st. It's a, it's a snapshot of the nation. And it, does, it doesn't matter if you are a non-citizen, if you are a citizen, everybody counts. Mm -hmm. So an illegal immigrant? Can, should answer this? Everybody should answer the census form, mm -hmm. and nobody should have any fear that this information is shared with any other government agency. By law, it cannot be shared with immigration, it cannot be shared with IRS, it cannot be shared with the Justice Department or any other agency. That in itself is a criminal offense. Um, there, um, there's a lot of concerns about undercounted groups, and you know, you mentioned them kind of briefly. Can you kind of characterize them? Um, in a simple way. Immigrant groups, non-English speaking groups, mm -hmm. uh, non-citizen groups. Mm -hmm. New York State's population is actually increasing, primarily in New York City, mm -hmm. and entirely because of an influx of non-English speaking immigrants. And it's for that reason that the state is sustaining its population, the downstate is increasing. But it's those populations also who are, who are the hardest to count, who are the hardest to reach. So while it's a boon that, these, that new people are coming in, it's a challenge to make sure that they're counted so that we get the services, the representation that their presence brings us. How are homeless and people in institutions dealt with? The Census Bureau has a special program called Group Quarters. For the homeless, the Census Bureau goes out to homeless shelters and out on the street and working with homeless agencies and advocates, they make a special effort to count people all in one night throughout the entire city. If you are incarcerated in a prison, if you live in a college dormitory, if you are living in a senior citizen's group home or buildings like that, then the Census Bureau counts you in what's called group quarters. If you live in a dormitory, the, um, the dormitory authorities, the, you know, the, the landlord, whomever, will work with the Census Bureau to get these forms to you to fill them out yourself. If you are in a prison, then uh, the prison authorities will submit administrative records. But everybody counts, whether you're in your home and fill this out, whether you don't fill it out and someone knocks on your door over the summer, or whether you're in a hospital or dormitory or a prison, everybody is counted and one number is reached for, you know, for the entire country, for each state at the end of the year, and at that time the congressional reapportionment, the reassignment of congressional districts among the states is determined. The pre by law, the president must report the final census numbers by December 31st of the census year. Now, you've just led into your specialty, which is the reassignment and redistricting. Can you talk a little bit about what that involves? It's very, very, well, very big, but we don't hear about that. that on well, it, 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 it happens once every decade, and it's also something that's required by the federal constitution. Uh, beginning in uh, 1961, the U.S. Supreme Court, in a famous case called Baker versus Carr, held that representation in legislatures from Congress down to your local city councils, county legislatures, must be based on population, on equal representation, that one person's vote weighs as much as another person's vote. Up until the 1960s, many state legislatures, many congressional districts had not been redrawn. You know, people re might remember from uh, social studies in high school, the rotten boroughs in England where people were representing far-flung areas in England where nobody lived. Well, in New York State, every county had a state senator. So if you had one senator in an upstate county where there were more cows than people, yet you had a million people living in Manhattan that had you know, fewer state senators, there was an imbalance. Mm -hmm. So beginning in the 1960s, the Supreme Court required that every state legislature, every congressional district, every city council be redistricted once every 10 years based on the census. 
So this data is used by the states, by the city, uh, to redraw city council districts in the state legislature and the congressional districts. And similarly, counties throughout New York State will do the same process once every 10 years. Uh, do they all change constant or, uh, with every oh, they, census? They change once every 10 years. Uh, ideally, just to give you a very simple sense, if you have a jurisdiction of a thousand people mm -hmm. and there are 10 districts, each district would be of about 100 people. Uh, you know, the courts require that for congressional districts, every district within the state be nearly equal as possible to each other. In New York State, the difference in the populations are about oh, half a million. They don't differ more than one person from district to district among the 29. The courts have a more lenient standard because of local government uh, features that for city councils and state legislatures, you can vary the population a little bit, but not more than 10 percent from the size of the largest to the size of the smallest district. Uh, in New York State, Senate districts will range from 290,000 people to about 300, um, yeah, 310,000 people, all within a bubble of about 10 percent. But you've got to, you know, try to reach a one-person, one-vote balance so that most districts are equal to each other. Mm -hmm. Within New York City, because of the state constitution's uh, various rules, every assembly and every Senate district within New York County must be equal. So if people are looking at the maps of the current districts, uh, you'll find often a zigzagging, especially in, in the Upper East Side between the two assembly districts or the two or three, uh, well, the, the two different state Senate districts. They, they can't exactly go straight down Second Avenue. You've got to balance out the districts so that they're exactly equal on the east side to the west side you know, of the community board. So that, that's a state law requirement, but they are all of equal population. That's the key thing to remember. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, you mentioned that they're, they're very unusual. And uh, how is it handled? Is it like, look, because in, in Manhattan, we are all in big buildings. Is it, you know, they look at the building demographics? Well, the, the basic requirements are two or threefold. Mm -hmm. First, I just explained, is the one person, one vote population requirement with the state law requirements that they be balanced out exactly equal among uh, the districts within one county. You've also got the Federal Voting Rights Act, uh, which, which uh, provides basic vote protections against weakening minority group voting strength. Um, New York State had a li literacy test that was enacted by the state legislature over 100 years ago to try to assimilate um, German, Yiddish, Italian, French-speaking immigrants to learn English. That literacy test Fast forward to about 1970, when many um, New Yorkers were speaking Spanish, resulted in a requirement that New York County, Kings County, Brooklyn, or the, and the Bronx County fall under part of the Federal Voting Rights Act that requires any change made from the location of a polling booth to the district lines. Any election law change must be approved by the federal government, either the Justice Department or a federal district court. And that's called preclearance under the Voting Rights Act. And in a nutshell, what that means is that you cannot weaken or reduce the number of effective minority districts for the city council or the state legislature or Congress. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work under the one person, one vote rule, the population requirements on how you draw the lines within a county, and the Voting Rights Act. So for just as an example, New York uh, County has one uh, uh, member of Congress, Congressman Rangel, who has a, a district that is effectively an African-American, Latino-based district. You've got to maintain the integrity of that district to ensure that the minority community, Asian-American, Hispanic, and African-American, will control the outcome of the election. Similarly, in the Bronx County of Congressman Serrano, Congressman Crowley has a district that also goes from the Bronx to Queens. In Kings County, you've got uh, Congressman Towns, Congresswoman Clark, Congresswoman Velazquez. Uh, those districts must be maintained under the Voting Rights Act. So those are the two major driving legal requirements, equal population and the Voting Rights Act. 
Um, what kind of changes are expected with the 2010 census? Do you have any sense of what's going to come? Well, statewide, there's been a loss of population upstate, from Buffalo to Albany. Population hemorrhages, you know, have cut back the number of people. New York City has increased. Mm -hmm. So you could expect that more districting, more population growth would be focused on downstate than upstate. Mm -hmm. And I give the same message that I'll tell people in New York County as I would in Chemung or Elmira. If you want to maintain the core, the basic outline of your current districts, count people. Because even in the small cities, you've got pockets of population that are hard to count. So we need to make sure that there's a level playing field by a full and complete census count. That's where it all begins. Has this census had more promotion for it? Because that's what I'm hearing. Everyone's Every census has always improved on the last one, yeah. but I think the Census Bureau is being more creative. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Super Bowl ad was indicative. Uh, there, there's a much more uh, livelier um, uh, advertising campaign going on now. I think more people are aware of the census. More personalities that are well known are promoting the census. And uh, you know, I work as a counsel in the state senate. Every state senator in New York City has a census coordinator on his or her staff. We are trying to saturate the city with as much census coverage as we can. We're working with elected officials, with church, civic, labor, business groups. We, you know, we don't have uh, until November to do this. We have until March, and then over the summer with the enumerators, then it's all over. If we don't get it right this time, we have to wait 10 years. Mm -hmm. and that's a big, t uh, it's a long time to wait to try to do it better again. How long is it the enumerators have to go and double check on everybody? People will start going out for the Census Bureau in late April and go until about June or uh, July. They might knock on your door as many as five or six times to try to get the information they need. Mm -hmm. If you fill out the form and leave half the answers blank, they'll knock on your door. Mm -hmm. One challenge that you have on the Upper East Side, since most people live in apartment buildings, is to make sure that a condo board or a super lets the bureau in. I know in, in past censuses, you know, a, a, an alert doorman seeing someone show up saying, hi, I'm from the Census Bureau, sorry, you don't know someone inside, they don't bring you in, you can't walk the halls of this building. So hopefully that can be worked out. And the message to, uh, to supers, to, you know, to condo boards, others, please let the Bureau into your building. Work something out with them. Mm. Well, thank you so much. This has just been a fantastic discussion. Um, I've been really impressed with the knowledge I've gained today and I hope our audience has too so I hope it's very successful and maybe we'll have we should all hope it's successful and and hopefully you'll come back and tell us you know that oh, everybody we'll, got counted we'll have the numbers in in uh, in December okay. and next year uh, you know the state legislature the city council the lines all get redrawn and that's something where uh, speaking on behalf of the state Senate we want a transparent publicly involved process so we will we'll want to be back here again Thank you.